In this video, you'll learn exactly how users can add signatures to documents directly inside your own Bubble app. If you're building an application like a DocuSign clone or even something like a QuickBooks clone, this feature is the perfect addition to bring your product to life. So if you ever want users to sign documents and then be able to review those documents that they've signed, this is the tutorial for you. In our example today, we're going to learn how we can not only display a list of all the documents a user is required to sign, but we're also going to explain how they can actually sign those documents and store that signature in our database. And then finally, we're going to mark those documents as complete once a user has in fact added their signature. Look, there's plenty to cover within this one, so I'm going to hand this right over to Luca and he's going to walk through everything you need to know in as much detail as possible. Hey there, Luke in here. Today we're going to be going over how to sign things within your Bubble application. Now, a good examples of applications like this are DocuSign, and today I've built out a workflow as if you're a tenant signing all the paperwork to live in a certain property. So how would this actually look? If we wanted to sign our tenancy agreement here, we're going to click on the agreement, we're going to pop our signature in and we're going to save that. And as you can see, we get sent back to our page. We can see that we've signed it. And if we look in our apps data here and we go onto our tenancy agreement and we have a look, you can see that we've got a signature. And if we go onto the signatures that have been created, you can see that is my user. And you can see that we've got our signature stored within our database. So how are we actually doing this? If we jump into our design tab now, we'll be able to take you to exactly how we've built this process out. The first thing we're going to want to do is set up two new types of property. So the two types we're going to want to have is the documents that we're going to sign and then the signatures. So for the documents, we're going to add a new type document we're going to click create underneath this document we're going to want to have a name we're going to have that as a text we're going to want to have the content of the document as well and that's going to be field type as text the third and final type for our document is going to be the signatures now we haven't created that yet so we're going to want to add a new type which is going to be signatures we're going to click create and for the signatures we want to store who has signed it so the person and the field type for that is going to be the user we're going to click create and then we're going to want the actual signature which is going to be a image type we'll click create now for every document we're going to want to have who signed it with their signatures and we're going to want to have the ability to have multiple people signing one document. So we're going to have this make this field a list. Click. So we're going to write signatures again. And the type of this is going to be signatures. Perfect. We're going to click create. So now we're going to want to create the page that the user is going to sign the documents on. So we're going to go over to the design tab for that page. And I've just put here a large text element set to 40 to the style I want um, to be able to start with here. So first of all, because this is going to be where the user is going to sign a document, we want the page type or the page data type to actually be set to document. So we're going to go over and find your page tab in the element tree. And then you're going to go to the type of content and then you're going to go and set it to document, which is the type that we've just created. Perfect. Now, for our text element here, this is going to be the document's title. So we're going to do the current page document name. Now, to save us some time, we're going to copy and paste this element. And we're going to turn this into the document's content. And we're going to format that. So we're going to just put this to 12. Lovely. And we're going to leave that as is i'm going to center it to left perfect so now when we send a user along with the document we want that's going to display the title or the name of the document 
with the document and now underneath that we're going to add our signature pad so the signature pad we're going to use is actually a plugin which will be in the description and to get this plugin what you're going to do is go to the plugin tab and you're going to want to add a plugin and type in sig and it is the first one that comes up called signature pad and it is a free plugin so once you've installed that plugin you want to go to the design tab and what you're going to do is scroll down to your input forms and we now have a signature pad available so we're going to drag that onto our page underneath the content perfect and we're going to once that is placed go into layout you can see the height and width are very small so i'm just going to change this to 400 quickly and we're going to do the same for the height so it's a nice square we're going to center this in the middle and i'm actually going to change this to 200 to give the content a little bit more space perfect so once we've done that we're going to actually click this save button that's in the plugin um, and we're going to have that trigger all of our workflow so we're going to right click our um, signature box and do start an edit workflow and it starts a workflow that basically once the signature pad is saved so we've clicked that save the button and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to first off create a new signature so this is going to be create a new thing that thing type is going to be signature the person of the signature is going to be the current user or the user pressing the button and the signature is going to be the signature pads image url perfect now we're going to want to update the document now so if we do make changes to thing that thing is going to be the current page document and the thing we're going to change is we're going to add this signature that we've just created in step one to the document so the result of step one creating new signature we're going to add that now perfect so the final step of the workflow is that we're going to want to send our users back to our list of documents page which we haven't actually created yet so what we're going to want to do is hit navigation go to page we're going to create a new page we're going to call that page dot underscore i underscore can underscore sign perfect i'm going to click create and now we can send our users to the docs i can sign page perfect so what we're going to do is now set up the docs i can sign page so we want to click the page we just created and then we want to go to the our design tab and now on this page here we're going to want to set up a repeating group with all of the different um, documents that we can potentially sign so what we're going to do is add a really quick title place that on our page at the moment our page is set out to fix so we're going to want to go to layout we're going to want to hit column and once we've set our container layout to column we're going to want everything to sit in the middle of our page so we're going to go container alignment centered following this we're going to want to reclick our title we're going to want to center it in the middle we're going to uncheck make this element fix width putting all the pixels to zero making it fit width of the content and now we're just going to add our title the document you need to sign perfect because it's a title i'm just going to go and detach the style make it bold and make it slightly bigger perfect so following this we're going to want to add a repeating group so we're going to drag that underneath the title we're going to go to layout and we're going to center it and now bubbles asking us what we want to be in this repeating group so we're going to click the type of content and this is going to be documents now we're just going to do all of the documents so we're going to do do a search for documents and this will just be all of the documents that we'll have uploaded in our application perfect so the second thing we're going to do is copy and paste our title because that is a nice piece of format text we're going to want to make it smaller to fit into our repeating group so we're going to change the size of the font to 14 
And then we just then drag it into our repeating group here. Perfect. And now we're going to want to format our repeating group to the same as we did with our page. So we're going to go to layout. We're going to click instead of column this time. We're going to click row. Perfect. We're going to center this in the middle of each box of our repeating group by clicking the text and then clicking the vertical alignment centered. And we're just going to pop a couple of icons next to this as well. So we're going to want to go to our visual elements now, drag an icon into our box here. Now this is going to be to send us to our document signing page. So we type in paper, we're going to click this icon here, which is the newspaper. And they go to layout and then do vertical alignment centered. Perfect. And the second thing we're going to do is just copy and paste that icon. We're going to go to the appearances. We're going to get a different icon for this one because this is going to only have to appear once we've signed the document. We're going to go and find an ice icon that we like. I'm just going to pick the tick here. I'm going to detach the style. I'm going to change that icon color to green to let me know that that was a good thing. And we need to go to the layout. So we're going to set some visibility rules for this because we only want this icon to appear once the document's been signed. So we're going to uncheck that. We're going to collapse this when it is hidden. And we only want this to appear when this cell's current document signatures. Each item's person contains the current user. So when all of the possible signatures that have been done, when one of them contains the current user, then this will be visible. So you're going to want to set a condition and then click that will be visible. Perfect. So what we're going to want this icon to do very quickly is we want to send this user to that documents page or sign page. So we're going to add a new action. We're going to click navigation, go to page. The page we're going to go to is the index page, which is our signing page and the data we're going to send. If you remember, we set our indexes page type to document. We're going to do the current sales document and that should be perfect. So before we preview our application, what I can see that we've done here is actually put and not formatted this text correctly because we want this to be the name of the current document. So what we're going to do is delete that and then we're going to insert dynamic text, the current sales document name. Perfect. Now, what we're going to want to do now is create some fake documents within our bubble application to test this out. So if you go over to the documents tab now and go on the app data tab, we're going to click new entry. We're going to call the name of this document we're going to sign is Tenant agreement. We're going to set the content to a load of random content. And you can obviously create a page where users are creating their own documents or are uploading PDFs, for example. They click create. And now we can run as a user and we'll have something to sign. So if we click run as a user, you can see we've got our tenant agreement already ready to be signed in here. So we're going to click our icon that's going to send this to your signing page. Lovely. We've got all of our documents here. And we're going to quickly sign it. We're going to click save. And now that has sent us back and you can see that we have signed the agreement. And again, in our bubble application, if we look at the app data and look at the documents, we've got a signature and in the signatures, we have a lovely signature that we just did, which is a big, nice scribble. But I hope this helps you out in building a web application you're doing at the moment. Um, and this is a yeah, a really good plugin and a really good way of building out certain applications that may be hard or would require some specific code. I hope this tutorial has really helped you out with whatever other application you are building. And just like that, you now know how you can add a signature feature directly inside your own bubble app. Thankfully, this one was a relatively straightforward process and you can really start to see how powerful this can make your application become. 
If you liked this video and you wanted to stay up to date with any additional bubble resources I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. For now though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.